All right. So, I'm not going to talk for 20 minutes before the video because you want to watch. Uh, let's see what this is about. It's an Arduino Uno. It's ugly. I'll tell you why. This is a 8000 BT window shaker. I have these leads that go into the start, uh, uh, the run capacitor and the fans and everything wired through relays and the relays are driven by 222A transistors with resistors that go into the digital out pins on the Arduino. On top is a WizNet 5100 Ethernet controller. Up here is a 9 volt DC power supply, um, AC power supply, why it's 9 volt DC. At two land. Up here is a 16 by 2 LCD display with an I squared C uh, driver behind it, so I'm only using four wires instead of a lot. And then over here is a DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. Very fancy, very pricey, two dollars, um, but much better than the DHT11. I'm actually in the cooler, and it's not very comfortable. All my limbs are asleep, but. I'm going to explain <coughs> how this is all rigged up. Pardon me. So, this cooler um, had to be put into production in a hurry because I have a Coca-Cola cooler, a commercial unit, that failed. It just ran and ran warm. All the pop was warm. In Canada we call it pop. You'll think of it as soda pop or soda or I don't know what they call it around the world, but here we call it pop. Um, this had to get rushed into production. It's also a fuel station, so I've used these fancy 25 amp um, solid state relays and a repurposed fuel dispenser relay. This is probably a $250 relay, also solid state. Everything in fuel is solid state. Mechanical ones are can cause explosions. Um, <clears throat> they don't have to be solid state when you rig yours up. Uh, there's nothing explosive in a pop cooler, hopefully. Um, I have ordered a new, it's a, a strip, a relay strip. There's four relays on it, and they will do 10 amp at 110, or sorry, 10 amp at 250 volt AC on the relay side. And the DC side is um, 3 to 32 volt DC on the coil, and it'll draw 5 milliamp, um, which is nice, so you can wire them straight into the logic pin. Word of caution about relays that you so when you're buying relays, you want to check what the coil requires in power. So even if it's rated that it will take um, your logic voltage, which on in this on this microcontroller is only 5 volt DC, this for example will try and pull 360 milliwatt, which is like 70 milliamp. It's quite a bit. Um, the Arduino is only rated to put out 20 milliamp tops on the logic pin. Theoretically, 40 uh, before it breaks. But um, with these uh, transistors, it's pulling 5 milliamp. So that's much better. So, why do I have an Ethernet shield on this thing? A um, <clears throat> couple reasons. First of all, it knows what time of day it is. And it knows that because um, it has this has a little crystal on it, and I can keep track of time. Um, so how do you, how does it know actually what time it is when it starts up? Because it, it, it doesn't have a uh, running clock when it's off. Well, it downloads the time over Ethernet. And it actually just goes, hits a website and downloads the index page. You can change, you can configure the URL. Um, and in basically in the header, uh, when it starts to download this web page, it tells the client, in this case the program, the software, what time it is and what day it is. So it just says, oh, well, it's this day and it's this time. Um, and it's in Greenwich Mean Time or Universal Time. And um, the configuration will say, okay, well, our time zone is where I am. It's, it's uh, GMT minus 7. So it, you just configure it for minus 7. And then it'll give you the accurate time within a few seconds. But we don't really have to be critical on this. <clears throat> um, so now it knows what time it is. Um, you'll notice that it's not running right now. You probably... Would be able to hear, you'd be able to hear it if it was. The reason is it's after midnight, and I'm in the store. It's closed. That's why I'm making this video. Um, we close at midnight, and it knows that it's after midnight, so it actually just turned off, and then it will turn back on at 8 in the morning. 
and the, all these lights will come on, and this thing will start buzzing, and everything will start cooling. It's great. The other thing is, all the configuration is done through a web browser. Um, <clears throat> the actual configuration is a little bit cumbersome, so I put together a little web interface. It's also in the GitHub. It requires a, a, a submodule in it, submodule update. You got or sync, but you need to pull down for some jQuery jazz. There's a really cool thing called chart.js that I use. Um, they graphs out your temperature over, I think it's five minutes or something, so you can see the gradual increase and decline, and you can figure out how fast it's cooling and things like that. Um, it'll also tell you your phase and how long it's left. It tells you all this stuff on the display up here. It's really hard to see because it just looks bright, but it pages through three pages. It's asleep now. It's 28.2 C. It is really quite warm. Um, the time is 1.11 a.m. It has been up for 3 hours, 46 minutes, and 26 seconds. I can read that. You can't. My eyes are better than the camera. Um, so you could put it on the internet, but then people might go on there and change your target temperature and your temperature threshold and your scheduling and your uh, run times for the compressor. So <clears throat> uh, this window shaker, um, 8000 BTU Frigidaire window shaker, has a limit of 16C. That means it will not cool below 16C. So we're kind of we're kind of breaking the law here, not really, but you know, uh, we're, we're breaking the spec because a compressor is a, a heat pump's a heat pump, um, and this room in here is extremely well insulated. There's uh, three uh, uh, styrofoam insulation all the way around. You could probably use fiberglass, but we want a higher higher R value, the better better ceiling, and um, S E A L I N G. Um, but it can do it. As a matter of fact, it can be a freezer. I don't know what people would be using this project for. I published it because I wanted to share it. I expect not everybody has um, a cooler in a store that they need to cool their soda, but uh, it would work just as well for a wine cooler. It would work just as well for a, a kegerator. It would work well for, uh, you could actually modify the code and wire up a heater as well, and you could have a very specific, uh, uh, a very fancy thermostat in a house or a room or a workshop, um, basement, whatever. Um, or you could wire it up to pretty much any number of things. So rather than running an AC unit, for example, you could just run a fan. Or, um, yeah, I have no idea. I'd love to see what people use, uh, use it for. Um, leave your questions and comments in the video comments. Links, screenshots, anything else I scrounge up on the project, I will put in the video description. Thanks for watching.